So building a hand in NURBS is really difficult. At least it's always been for me. And if we start with this append face workflow, I've got 15 minutes left here. Um, we should be able to very easily build a hand in that amount of time. I'm going to start with a single face. And I want to make sure that I'm working in box mode. So on a smooth toggle. And I'm going to grab an edge. I'm going to pick it. I'm going to bring up my manipulator. I'm going to alt drag. One finger goes there. Next finger goes there. Next finger goes there. And notice this stuff's all wonky, so I'm going to go to vert mode. And I'm just going to straighten this out real quick. And if you think about most of the stuff that you build in, in, your, in your daily practice is pretty much kind of boxes with the edges smoothed off. And I'm going to simplify this a little bit just to speed things along. And so T-Splines is so beautifully suited for that because it does really, really good, a really, really good job at that. So now I want to add my fingers. I'm going to go to edge mode. I'm going to pick this one and this one. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want them to extrude separately. If I pick the whole edge and extrude it, I'd get one big blade sticking out of here. So I'm going to alt drag my disc and I'm going to add these two fingers. I'm going to just pick this and modify it. And then I'm going to go pick these two. I'm going to alt drag these. And that way they all came out separately. If I were to, again, if I were to pick them all, you know, at the same, I would have gotten one big extrusion instead of what I wanted, which was individual extrusions. And this is the kind of thing, if you're trying to do this in nerves, this would make you crazy. And this is going to be kind of crude, but I'll, you'll get the point. So if I go back to my edge bow now, I can pick this one, this one, this one, this one. Now, since they're separated, I can drag them all out together, and that knuckle, and then we'll just add the top one. Go back to my vert mode, very quickly, adjust this stuff. I'm not going to get too crazy on this because you guys get the point, but make it somewhat hand-like. I just don't want him to look like he's got some kind of crazy rheumatoid arthritis or something like that. And again, you know, notice how when I'm laying this out, the where the edge lines are. You know, in this case, the ed edge lines are kind of like where the knuckles are going to be. You know, so it's like if you know something's got to bend somewhere, you know, there's got to be a piece of detail or something there. When you lay your faces out, you know, do it like that. So in this case, I just need to add the thumb. I'm going to go back to my edge mode. I'm going to double click because I want that whole edge. I'm going to alt drag this down. That'll pretty much give me my palm. Go back to vert mode. Add a little bit of curvature on the edge of that. Pull this in just a hair. Bring this down. And I just need my thumb now. So I'm going to go back to edge mode. I'm going to pick. I'm going to alt drag. Alt drag. Alt drag. Again, you know, trying to be conscious of like where the detail is going to go. Go back to edge mode or divert mode. Very quickly adjust this. And 99% of my work is now already done because I've laid out where the detail and stuff is going to be. If I go to my perspective view, you can see that this is dead flat. Now, in this case, I could extrude these faces just like I did with the knife, but I'd only get half a hand, so I want a full hand. And so in this case, I'm going to thicken. 
I'm going to grab all my faces and I'm going to use the thicken. And I'm just going to drag this out. And I've got a big, fat, thick hand. If I smooth toggle. I get a beautiful smooth hand. I haven't been watching the comments, but this is where you all type in, ooh. Then I can obviously go in and start modifying this. You know, however I want to do it. All right. So this this is the this is the workflow that I use for 99 percent of my stuff. This is this is what I I almost always start with. Um, Juan um, uses this workflow and a bunch of other workflows. He's he's you know does some absolutely masterful stuff. Um, I, I tend to be kind of a, a Neanderthal when I do this, and this just for me is is kind of the simplest way to get started so it's the one that I always try and show beginners because if you know nothing else other than this you can start pounding shapes out and and get some really impressive results with like three tools so um, that's that's kind of my time I think we're we're uh, have about ten minutes before the end if there's anything else that you guys are are confused about um, go ahead and type in let me um, let me know what uh, what I can answer for you Juan and Matt are also here and um, and I hope to hope to start seeing models from you guys piling in here okay thanks for that demo Kyle and um, yeah feel free we have a few minutes left if you have any questions about anything that Kyle has shown or other questions that have just come up as you've started using T-Spines then um, now's the time to ask um, so it kind of looks like we have a question here. When you're when you're moving and scaling, can you move the pivot of uh, of the manipulator? Yes, actually, that's a great question, and I'm glad you asked it. If I pick an edge, you'll notice that the manipulator centers on the edge that I picked. But what if I want to bend this finger up? Well, I want to grab all these edges, and the manipulator, you'll notice, centers on those edges. Well, that's not where I want to bend from. I want to bend from here. If you hit the T key, that will, you'll notice the manipulator will disappear and you can then snap the manipulator to a new location. If I go to rotate now, oops. So my, manipula my manipulator is there. I want to change it. I hit the T key. I can use my Rhino O snaps and snap it there, and then I can grab one of these and bend it. Okay, yeah, and that works for all translators. Yeah, and the other the way the other way to get at the setting the pivot besides the hotkey is um, you can just go in the T spines drop down menu and uh, go mouse over manipulator, and there you can set the pivot as well. Set pivot. Yep. Okay. So to demo that, if I wanted to, if I wanted to rotate this again, if I wanted to rotate just the tip of this, I'd select those T splines manipulator set pivot, snap it to here, grab which one I want, and I can bend it from a different point. So here's another question. All of the forms shown today have rounded edges. Can you make a sharp edge on a form like on a knife where the blade attaches? Yes, you can. And, and you can add a crease or you can change the weight. Um, for me personally, um, and, I'll sh and I'll just show you that. If I, if I pick an edge here and I crease it, You'll notice that what's this done thinking? If I move this now, oh, Kyle, it looks like you have your soft manipulation enabled. So if you turn that off, oh. then you'll be able to move just that edge. Got it. All right. So if I grab this and move this, 
Oops, got to move it in the right direction. You notice that I have a sharp crease in there. Um, so you can do that, and the, the crease will translate two surfaces away. So if I roll around here, you'll notice that the crease actually follows through this model and then peters out once it gets two surfaces, two faces away from where it started. Um, so, so yes, you can add sharp edges to it. My, my kind of my thinking on that is that it's very rare when you're designing a project that you're ever going to have a knife edge. And, and if you need it, you got it because it's, you know, crease is there. But, but for me, um, I tend to really like this TS weight command because what it does is it allows you to, I can, you know, make this a very high number and I can get a really sharp edge, but it's not, it's not, you know, knife sharp. Um, and most of the time, you know, you're not, you're not, you don't want a knife edge. If you look at something, even if you zoom in on something like the edge of an iPhone case or something like that, it has a very tiny radius on it. So I tend to try and keep those because, especially when you're rendering or something like that, all those little fillets um, will render and, and add a lot of believability to your model. Whereas if you have really knife edges, you know, that's kind of a, that's kind of a dead giveaway that you're looking at a CG image. Um, so I tend to try and stay away from crease. Don't avoid it because it's bad. It's not. It's just a personal preference of mine that, that I tend to like to add weight, you know, to an edge or actually add some, add some additional edges in there. Like if I wanted to sharpen this one up, um, I'd actually, you know, could insert an edge um, to add some more detail down here and then you know, use that to sharpen it up as opposed to, as opposed to, you know, putting a crease on it. Creases tend to, you know, be a little difficult to manage sometimes because they can shoot, you know, they can shoot their form through the model in areas that you wouldn't necessarily, you know, want them to. So now if I, since I've got a little extra edge in here, if I run the TS weight, <clears throat> maybe like five, this will tighten up considerably and you can see that you know, you can get a really sharp edge, but it still, you know, remains something that would, you know, render really beautifully, so. So, so Kyle, there's a couple of questions about making holes in a T-spline. One, can you trim a T-spline surface with a curve, and then are there any other ways to uh, make a hole in a T-spline surface? Um, you can trim a T-spline surface with a curve. The problem is it will convert to a rhino poly surface, so you'll lose your T-splines um, data, um, which is fine if that's what you need. But you can also, um, like say for instance, if I wanted to put a hole through this thing, um, I could um, basically just bridge from one face to another, or I can go to uh, my box mode and I can say for instance um, let me insert a point here and split this surface and then insert a point back here and split this surface if I pick a, this face and this face and delete them I've now got a hole in there, and then all I would need to do is just bridge these two edges together. So if I go back to edge mode, grab my bridge, select these four, and these four, and in this case, I'm just gonna I'm gonna use just two segments. And everything's lined up the way it should be, so I'm just going to accept that. And you notice that that bridged in. And then if I smooth toggle back out, I should have a nice smooth hole here in the center. Yeah, and just, just one note, you don't even have to delete the faces. You can just bridge those faces together yeah, as well. Yeah, bridge face to face, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and could you could you just show an example, Kyle, of what happens when you just throw a trim like trim a circle out of that out of that hand as well, just to to show how that converts to nerves nerves automatically? Sure. Sure. If I go to top view, um, say for instance, I know for a fact I have to I have to trim this with a curve that looks exactly like this. I can just do I can just use the Rhino trim tool. And it just converts, it makes the trim, but it converts it to a rhino poly surface. Oops. Okay. So it's really, it's really flexible. Um, it, you know, it doesn't get hung up like if you're in T-splines, you're not stuck in T-splines forever. And, you know, the worst case scenario, you trim something and it changes from a T-splines object to a NURBS poly surface. And then you're right back in rhino where, where you were to start with. But, you know, you have this beautiful NURBS hand that, you can boolean from you can, you know, do all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. So, um, so what, what what I always recommend then is just when you do that, just save a copy of your of your T spine model before you trim it, and so that way, if you want to go back to make the modifications, you can just go back to the T spine, make those modifications, and then retrim with that same curve you have. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I do that fairly commonly. If I if I'm gonna if I'm if I know I'm going to trim something, or you know I know I have to do it, but I may need to go back and modify it. Like say for instance, you get all the way done with the model and you have to trim something, save a copy of it, and or you know if you're converting something to engineering, you send something to engineering, keep your T-splines model, export it as a NURBS, you know as a NURBS file, send it to your Pro E guy. If he comes back and says there's a battery that's shoving through the edge of this and you need to make it bigger import his battery into your T-splines model, stretch the T-splines model a little bit, re-export it, and off you go. You're right back to where you were. So it's, it's super flexible, and it works fantastic for stuff like that. Okay. Well, I think that those are all the questions that I've seen so far. So we just have a couple minutes left, so if there's any more questions, uh, feel free to type them in now. Um, and otherwise... Please, I ended on time. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Great, great job. Um, okay. Well, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, we'll be sending out a follow-up email, and you can just respond to that if you have any other questions. But um, I hope you all have a great day, and we'll, we'll see you at a future webinar.